Hey everyone, Nunzio here with the West Hollywood Youth Orchestra, part of Youth Training Orchestras, continuing our basic music series. We're going to start with a review and then move on to today's concepts, which are the half step, whole step, the seven natural notes, and introducing today our 12 chromatic notes. To review what we've learned so far, we've been introduced to the treble clef, the alto or C clef, and the bass clef. For a simple reminder, our treble clef marks where G is, and that's on the second line. Our C clef marks where C is, and that's on the middle line. And our F clef or bass clef marks where F is. We have learned our seven natural notes, that is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then the pattern repeats, continuing in both directions. And so far, we have only dealt with our natural notes in this series, but today we're gonna to show you how to expand these seven natural notes. Moving on to today's concepts, we have the half step or the semitonus, and another term is a minor second. This is the smallest step that we use in the Western tradition of music. The next step is the whole step or a tone, and we call this a major second. Now, if you continue adding steps, the interval gets bigger. So one and a half steps is a minor third, two steps is a major third, but we're gonna cover this in the next episode going over intervals. So for today, we're just going to focus on how do we sharp or flat our seven natural notes. Now, on a piano, you'll notice that there are three black keys and then two black keys, but in between that pattern, there is no black key between these two white notes. Now this happens between the E and the F and the B and the C. I put a blue H here to mark a half step. So what this is telling you is, between all these keys that have a black key, you have a whole step. And that's represented here by the space in between the notes. So between G and A, we have a whole step. But between B and C, we do not have a whole step. We have a half step. This is a natural feature of music, and we will be discussing this more in other videos. But for today, all we're going to do is point out what it is and how it works. In our natural set of notes, there is a whole step between A and B, a half step between B and C, a whole step between C and D, a whole step between D and E, coming back down here. We have a half step between E and F, and a whole step between F and G. So what we're going to take away from this is, there is no space between B and C. Now that's not actually correct, but what we're going to do is keep it simple and explain more as we go along. This is A equals 220. Then we know that this is equal, this ratio is three to two of this. And so what we know from here is to get a fifth above, it is a ratio of three to two. So if we divide this by two and times it by three, we're going to get And this, in fact, is E equals 330 vibrations per second. Now, if I wanted to find out what this E vibrates at, well, we know that an octave equals half. So if that E is 330, then this E equals half of 330. 160. So the frequencies we're going to be discussing today are going to fall between 165 vibrations per minute and 330 vibrations per minute. And we're going to be focusing on our A220, which is the A below middle C. Great. So now that we went over that, let's look at how we make our natural notes sharp or flat. So starting with A, our basic A220. If I want to make A sharp on the piano, I have this key that lies between A and B. So I don't want to go to B, but I want to get to this middle area of an A sharp. So I'm going to put an A right there. And there's our sharp. You can make any note sharp. So let's continue. I have a B, and I'm going to put my B sharp in the next area. My D will go to a D sharp. Oh, and my C sharp. And here is E, so I want an E sharp. And I'm going to continue down. Here I have G, so I'm going to have my G sharp, which comes between G and A, my F, have an F sharp, and finally E, have my E sharp. So what we're seeing so far is that when you have a whole step, 
there is space for a, for a note in between the whole step. So between A and B, I can have A sharp. But where does B sharp land? Because there is no whole step. And on the piano, there's no black key. So think about it on the piano. If you want to play B sharp, which is the next note up, the next possible note up, what note are you going to play? So B sharp and C are played by the same key on the piano. So let me just go ahead and label these. All right. Now let's go to the other direction. So I have an A and I want to make my A flat on the piano. The next possible note to play is this black key and that comes between A and G. So between A and G, there's an extra key you can play. So let's mark our A flat. Here we have, that's gonna go so high, so here is A flat, here is my G flat, and here is F flat. Here I have B and I wanna make it flat, so there's a B and I make it flat, C flat, D flat, and continue up. So now we have filled up our board or our, our, our bars with all of the possible notes. So every natural note has a sharp and a flat. So here is A, I have an A sharp, and I have an A flat. I have a B, I have my B flat, I have my B sharp. On the piano, to do this, you play the next available key. So if I'm playing a G and I want a G flat, the next available key is not F, it is the black key here because it falls in between the next available key. If I'm playing a C and I want to make that C flat, the next available key to play is a B. So does that mean that C flat and B natural are the same note? We're going to get back to that in one moment. Let's count first and see if we can uh, identify how many chromatic notes fall between an octave. Here is E and here is E. 12 and then we return to our starting position. So, how many chromatic notes are there per octave? There are 12 chromatic notes per octave. Now, that doesn't seem to make sense because if I have seven natural notes and each of them has three forms, that would be seven times three, and that would be 21. So why are there only 12 chromatic notes instead of 21? Well, we have this word called enharmonic. Now, it's very important to mention that B sharp does not equal C. They are not the same note, but they can be. And what that means is, in pure music, B sharp does not equal C, and C flat does not equal B. But if we look at the piano, if a pianist is asked to play B sharp, the only way they can play that is by playing the C key, and the piano does not change tuning. It's set. The same way if you have a C and you need to play a C flat, there is no C flat key. You're going to play the B natural key. So while B sharp does not equal C, C is an acceptable substitution for B sharp. And while C flat does not equal B natural, it is an acceptable substitution. So now that we have overlapping notes, we can see how there's not 21 chromatic notes, but only 12. Because while each natural note does have three forms, a sharp and a flat, they overlap. A flat is an acceptable substitute for G sharp. So on the piano, instead of having an A flat key and a G sharp key, they are close enough and our ears will compensate enough and it's so minute a difference that they can be played by the same key. And when you have singers and string instruments, you can adjust and you can play a G sharp and an A flat. But when you have something like the piano, that's not the human voice that you can't uh, make minute subtle differences. A piano string is tuned and that's it. A keyboard is tuned to a note. When you hit that key, you get that frequency. So in order to make it acceptable for human hands, we couldn't have 21 notes. There would just be too many keys. And so on some level, we had to reduce it. And this is the system that we've been using for hundreds of years. Chromatic comes from the Greek chroma, meaning colorful because in this you use all the notes of the scale so you get all the colors as opposed to the natural where you only get some of the colors of the scale. Next we're going to be talking about the intervals that continues on this pattern and then we're going to be getting into scales and keys. So to review everything we went over today, the minor second or the half step or the semitone marked in H on this board is the smallest step that we use in modern Western music, uh, in Western music. 
and the whole step is the next biggest tone that we regularly use. The natural notes are based on a series of whole and half steps, and those are the first seven letters of the alphabet. We've labeled them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and this pattern continues in both directions. Every natural note can be made sharp or flat, and by making them sharp or flat, we have an overlap, where an A sharp is a acceptable substitute for a B flat, and a B flat is an acceptable substitute for an A sharp, and so we call them enharmonic, and they are often played by the same key, the same fingering, or the, the same position on different instruments. This is Nunzio with the West Hollywood Youth Orchestra, part of Youth Training Orchestras. We look forward to teaching you music and hearing back from you. Visit us on our website of wehoyouthorchestra.org or YTOOA for Youth Training Orchestras of America. Please visit us for more information on how you can start being a musician today. And of course, we'd love to hear from you. Leave some comments below and subscribe so you can check out our next video.